Uh, hi, this is Doug in my Mavic Air 2, and uh, today I want to do a little video on uh, hyperlapse with clouds. Um, I went on the internet the other day looking for drone videos on uh, clouds and hyperlapse, and I saw several videos showing how to do it with your Canons and your Nikons and whatever else, but I didn't see any, uh, any drone videos. Now, either I should expand my search or create a video, I guess. So let's get into it and talk about uh, some of the things I've discovered with using the, uh, the drone, specifically the Mavic Air 2. Now this would apply to uh, any drones that have similar features in their hyperlapse settings. So I'm not that familiar with the uh, Mini 2 or the new Air 2S or anything specific like that, but I'm sure that uh, many of these things I'm talking about will, will apply. So um, the first thing is, uh, if you've got CPL or NDPL filters, this is the perfect time to use those those filters. So if you got them, uh, slap them on your drone and be sure and use them. Clouds uh, and the blue sky behind them and uh, all that good stuff is a perfect time to get the contrast and the saturation that those filters allow. And uh, so please, uh, if you've got them, slap them on your drone. Uh, the next is uh, the, the basic camera settings, which is not a big surprise here. ISO 100, try to keep it as clear and sharp as possible. Uh, 4K, they have 1080, and they have 8K, which I, I just, I don't get 8K. Um, I know it was a big thing when they talked about it and announced it, but uh, I don't know anybody that's got an 8K device to present it on, and the videos are extremely limited length uh, when you're doing 8K. So 4K, I think, is a good, happy medium. You get excellent resolution and uh, a good length of, uh, of hyperlapse with the 4K. Uh, JPEG or RAW, uh, depending on, on your preferences uh, and your processing power of your computer and, and what you want to deal with. Um, I'm, I'm not sure the RAW is going to give you enough, or that you need enough flexibility with clouds in the sky to use RAW. Uh, JPEG, you can alter and, and edit your videos uh, in post to get more saturation and so on. So again, your own personal preference uh, for this particular situation. Um, I suggest uh, getting the videos to 20 or 25 seconds in length if you have enough battery life. Uh, if not, uh, obviously drop off from that. Um, if you do 25 seconds, um, don't fly too far away. Be close to the drone or have the drone close to you because when you're done processing, um, you're not gonna have any battery left to fly around and it. you don't wanna drop out of the sky and so on. Uh, I've talked about that in my other videos, so just be careful if you're if you're doing a 25 second hyperlapse, your battery will be pretty much depleted when you're done, probably. Um, set your hyperlapse to free. Do not fly your drone. There's nothing to be gained by flying your drone around trying to do clouds in hyperlapse. Uh, the clouds generally provide all their own movement. You, you don't need to add extra movement into it. If the clouds are stationary, uh, well, they're not. They're usually not stationary. And besides, why would you do a hyperlapse if clouds are just hanging there? So you're out there looking at clouds that are have some motion to them and they're developing and evolving, um, thunderheads, whatever, and you wanna get all that motion. And uh, if you're flying around, you're gonna distort everything. And, and in fact, you should try it as a test just to see what happens when you actually try to fly and do a hyperlapse. The results will be disastrous, uh, generally speaking. <laughs> Uh, then there's one exception to that we'll get to at the end. Um, angle the drone to the side of the clouds. In other words, if the clouds are coming straight at you, if they're moving really rapidly, that can work out well. If they're not, then the motion is, is not visible as well uh, when it's coming straight at you. So if you angle off to the, to the side here, the clouds coming this way or, or this way, you're gonna get more of that motion that you wanna see so, so start at an angle off to the side, you know, 45 degrees is, is a good start, but any place in there that looks good for your clouds on, on your day. So, um, Limit the foreground. Um, this is about the clouds, not the ground. Um, and so you, you don't necessarily want, you know, well, if, if you have a great, a great foreground, go for it. But again, mostly this is about the clouds. Um, so, uh, but if, if you can find a spot that's got a super foreground, you really want to hike, uh, highlight that, then go for it. But generally, again, it's about the clouds. Um, uh, note the guides or frame markers on the screen. This is a setting that I think is default. I've seen some people without these settings, but there are some brackets that show up. 
And that is actually going to be your video. All this stuff on the outside won't be in the video. So if you think you're getting the foreground correct and the clouds correct, look at those brackets and make sure you get a little foreground in there. You, you do want something in the foreground um, above those brackets. But if you uh, set it up and the brackets are above the foreground, when you get the video back, there's nothing, nothing there. So make a note of that. Um, that's pretty important to uh, understand what your final video is going to look like when it gets processed. Um, and then don't forget to let the hyperlapse process at the end of the video. Um, it takes a, several seconds to start, especially with the longer hyperlapse. Um, and then it takes two minutes, and I'm talking minimum just about, for any length of hyperlapse to process. And if you cut it off short before that, um, you're gonna lose most of your, most your video and you'll wonder what the heck happened to your 25 second video, now it's only 12 seconds or 18 seconds or something like that. Um, it takes quite a while to process, and so be very aware of that. Um, and the last thing is, when I said don't fly the drone, I'll stick with that, but you can use hyperlapse uh, with waypoints instead of just free. But you don't really fly it. So get your drone up in a position, and let's say the clouds are moving this way at an angle to you. Set it up, point it that direction, and then go to waypoints. And move the drone, rotate or yaw only, over to the left, let's say, uh, 90 degrees or 45 degrees, and set your first waypoint. Then yaw it back and set your second waypoint. No movement, just the yaw. And that's all you need is the two waypoints. At that point, uh, go ahead and start your video. The drone will get into position and start over here, and it'll start a very, very, very slow pan. The clouds are moving this way, and you're going this way. That'll accentuate the movement of the clouds, but it's not going to really be uh, motion that's you're flying it. It's just a yaw motion, very slow and very steady, coming across so that it starts over here and ends over there in 25 seconds. Pretty slow. If the clouds are moving really fast, you can start here at your first waypoint and set your second waypoint over here and move with the clouds. And again, it just gives a little more dynamic movement to the to the uh, video without making it look crazy or goofy or you know jerky or anything like that. So if the clouds are moving really quickly, you can uh, yaw with them on your two waypoints. And if the clouds are moving eh, a little more slowly, then start over here and move into the clouds to accentuate that movement. So it's uh, just a, a simple yaw on your waypoints. No moving, no flying the waypoints and going to different spots in the sky. That will uh, not generally look very well without a lot, a lot of practice, trust me. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, clouds uh, are a lot of fun. If they're really developing, boy, if I lived in Florida or something like that, I'd be out there getting some of those clouds every afternoon. Uh, or in the Midwest, uh, when you get the thunderstorms and, uh, without drenching your drone, of course. Uh, or in the Southwest in the summer, uh, late summer, when they get these uh, cells that come through the, the desert areas in Phoenix and, uh, and, and the Southern California deserts these big cells with their clouds and the rain coming down and the and developing huge uh, aspects of their of their clouds it's it's beautiful stuff uh, the samples you're going to see here will be a little less uh, less dramatic Southern california doesn't doesn't create a lot of good clouds quite honestly and i i wish it did but uh, these are the best i can come up with uh, this winter so i hope you uh, enjoy the uh, the video and what you're about to see here and some of the samples and uh, as always uh, thank you very much for watching take care so here's the first of three. Uh, this is where the drone is stationary with uh, no movement, no yaw, or anything, just uh, watching the clouds uh, float on by. Uh, they're developing uh, fairly nicely, uh, especially on the left-hand side. There's some good ones down, lower down. But again, uh, not always the best place to, to get some great clouds, uh, Southern California, that's for sure. And then uh, this next clip is uh, we're moving from left to right. Uh, trying to accentuate the movement of the clouds and you can see there's there's quite a bit of movement uh, in the clouds uh, going in this direction there's also a little jittery in my drone i know you can do some image stabilization i've tried it uh, i haven't been too much too successful with it so hopefully uh, in your editing you can do better uh, and this one's moving left to right 
or I'm sorry, right to the left, and you can see it's uh, going with the clouds. It uh, reduces the apparent motion somewhat, but it has a nice effect. So but anyway, it's always going to be your choice. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day.